えー、おはようございます。おはようございます。皆さん元気、元気みんなと皆さん今日天気もよくあんまり良くないですけど、皆さん元気にこう来れてますか。大丈夫そうですか。<笑>大丈夫ですか。ありがとうございます。はい、あ、グッモーニングパイソニースタス。あ、今日は足元の悪い中、パイコン JP2019 にお越しいただき、えー、ありがとうございます。Welcome to パイコン、パイコン JP2019。えー、それでは早速ですがオープニングの方を始めさせていただきます。Let's start opening。それでは、えー、パイコン JP2019 座長の吉田と、えー、一般社団法人パイコン JP 理事のヨナスに変わります。お願いします。えー、ようこそ、パイコン JP2019、えー、カンファレンスへ、はいえー。今年のテーマなんですけども、早速、えー、始めていきます。えー、今年のテーマは、えー、Python New Era という、えー、テーマになっております。Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to PyCon Japan 2019.、Uh, the theme for this year,、uh, we chose Python New Era. はい、スポンサーの皆様の紹介ですが、えー、と簡単にさせていただきます。あえー、とダイヤモンドスポンサー GMO インターネット様。Uh, we would like to,、uh, all our sponsors that make this event possible.、Uh, our diamond sponsor this year is GMO.、うん、はい。えっ、ー、とプラはいありがとうございます。And the、uh, platinum sponsors are these three companies.、えー、ゴールドスポンサーの方々。And then we have a lot of gold sponsors.、うん、はい。ゴールドスポンサーの方々。<笑>まだまだ続きます。はい、ゴールドスモーサーの方々。And yes, even more gold sponsors. <笑>ゴールドスモーサーの方々。<笑> And even more gold sponsors. <笑>はい、シルバースポンサーの方々。And then we also have these、uh, silver sponsors this year. シルバースポンサーの方々。And even more silver sponsors. シルバースポンサーの方々。And of course, even more silver sponsors. <笑>はい、パトロンスポンサーの方々です。はい。And then we have these、uh, attendees that are our patrons this year. ありがとうございます。はい、メディアスポンサーの方々。And then we also have、um, uh, uh, these media sponsors. さんあスポンサーの方々あ、ありがとうございます。Yeah, please a big applause for our sponsors. はい、えー、パートナーの方々。えー、さ昨日あ、えっ、ー、と一昨日ですね。えっ、ー、と、チュートリアルのパートナーの方々と本日開催されるルースコーダーワークショップのパートナーの方々です。ありがとうございます。And then we also have partners this year for our tutorials, which were yesterday, and also for the Youth Coder Workshop、uh, later today. ハースメント行為に抵触するような行動機関に、えー、と抵触するような時間は、えー、と慎んでいただくようにお願いします。はいえー、もし、えー、とスポンサーやスピーカーの方また一般の参加者の方が、まあ、あのあのハラスメントに、えーとまあ、抵触していると思われた場合は、えー、と報告は、えー、パ,パイコンのスタッフまで、えー、お願いします。えー、または、えー、とオフィシャルの窓口としてパイコン JP やパイコン JP というこのメールアドレスに、えー、とご報告をお願いしますあの SNS 等で炎上させて報告しようというようなスタイルはやめていただきたいというふうに思っていますのでできるだけあのスタッフとか、えー、と公式の窓口にお問い合わせをお願いします。Uh, please uh, read uh, our code of conduct this year and please follow it at all times.、Uh, this includes all the attendees and speakers and sponsors.、Uh, In the, in the case that you see any, any problems or that something is happening to you that is, you think is not in compliance with the code of conduct,、uh, please contact、uh, one of the staff members. Or if you cannot do so, please use the email address provided here, pyconjp at pycon.jp. And if you, please try to avoid、um, reporting issues publicly on social media such as Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. コードコンタクトにあの反しているとあの判断はスタッフの方でさせていただきますのでよろしくお願いします。はい、えっ、ー、とスタッフの、えー、しょあの着ているもののご紹介です。スタッフはえっ、ー、とこちらのえっ、ー、と赤い、えー、シャツか、えー、こちらのパ、えー、イコンのこのえっ、ー、と紫のシャツを着ています。でえっ、ー、とリボン
こちらにえとリボンでスタッフというのがつけています。ではこれから、えーえー、各種のご紹介です、はい、食事についてですけども、えー、とこの1階の大展示ホールではいつでも、えー、と食事や、えー、飲食可能です、はい、それから、えー、とボトルに入ったウェットボトル等の飲み物は、えー、と各ルーム、えー、部屋では可能ですあの廊下等では、えー、と飲食は、えー、しないでくださいよろしくお願いします、um, Eating and drinking is always allowed in this room, in this hall on the first floor, and bottled drinks are allowed in all the other rooms at any time.、Uh, please refrain from eating and drinking in the hallways. Thank you. Video no look ga satze tona nitsi de no chujiko des. Eto, kyontini wa satze wa, eto, ok, ma, hapu sa no kata no, just to ok na s o 録画とか、えー、録音についてはスピーカーによっては、えー、と禁止していることがありますので、えーまあ、最初に、えー、と案内がありますので、えー、それに従って、えー、対応してください、えー、あと、まあ、カンファレンスの風景は、えー、とスタッフや、えー、カメラマン等で、えー、と撮影していますので、えー、とご了承ください。Uh, note regarding、um, taking pictures and、uh, recording videos.、Mm. Uh, we, the p a g o n JP staff, will record、uh, all the sessions and take pictures throughout the event. And you are also generally allowed to take pictures and videos during the event. However, there may be some speakers who would prefer not to have their picture taken and not to have their,、uh, themselves being recorded.、Uh, this will be announced in fr-、uh, before an- all the sessions where this applies. So please follow their wishes. Thank you. イベントのご紹介になります、はい、本日は、えー、と23の、えー、トークがございます、えー、これから、まあ、キーノートそれから、えー、と午後に、えー、と招待講演がございます And so for the two events for today today we will have 23 talks including a keynote、uh, by Corey Althoff、uh, just after this opening as well as an invited talk、um, in the afternoon after lunch トークの場所のご紹介です。えっ、ー、とトークは、えー、基本的にまあ1階こちらか、えー、また2階あえっ、ー、とまた1階の場合は A たす B という部屋がこの裏にございます。はい。And、uh, for the location of the talks,、um, where we are right now is called the exhibition hall on first floor. We will have talks here. On the first floor, also behind the exhibition hall, is the room A and B,、uh, which is one room. And then on the second floor is a small exhibition hall、uh, that's up the escalator. So, this is the first floor. まあえー、ライブストリーミングでご覧ください、はい、4階は、えー、コンベンションホールがございまして、えー、こちらの方でも、えー、と2トラック行われております。この2つの場所は、And then there will also to be true tracks in the convention hall on the fourth floor. So, in the fourth floor, there is a conference talk in the fourth floor. In the fourth floor, there is a conference talk in the fourth floor. In the fourth floor, there is a conference talk in the fourth floor. In the fourth floor, there is a conference talk in the fourth floor. In the fourth floor, there is a conference talk in the fourth floor. ライブストリーミングでご確認ください。えー、それから E の部屋は、えー、とカ,ンフカンファレンスのルームとして後ほどご紹介します。それから F の部屋が、えー、と充電できるスペースとなっております
、えー、一部、えーセッションが行われているケースがありますがそれ以外の時間帯は、えー、と充電部屋として使用いただけますそれから G の部屋が、えー、宅室となっております And room F can be used、uh, to charge your mobile phones or laptops. And then in room G, we have、uh, our childcare. So, in this hall, the beginner session is going to be the beginner session. The beginner session is going to be the beginner session. The beginner session is going to be the And then after the keynote today,、uh, this morning, we will have a beginner session in the exhibition hall here. それから、えー、と E の部屋でユースコーダーワークショップがもう開催されます。えー、こちらの方は、えー、もう、えー、ここで開催されます。以上です。えー、ですね。はい、失礼しました。はい、<笑> And、um, in room E today, A from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., we have a youth coder workshop that's already starting now. それから、えー、本日、えー、ルーム F で13時40分から14時40分の時間に、インターコミュニティミートアップが開催されます。And today,、uh, in the afternoon from 1:40 p.m. to 2:40 p.m., we will have an intercommunity meetup in room F.、Uh, this is for、uh, members of any Python communities、uh, can attend there、uh, to exchange uh, their uh, knowledge. スポンサーブースですね。えー、スポンサーブースは1階のこの後ろの半分の方に、えー、ございます。はい。And then the sponsor booths, as you have maybe noticed when you came in, are here on the first floor,、um, behind the chairs before the entrance.、Um, yeah, please, feel,、uh, please go check them out when you have time. それランチ時間帯には、えー、ランチスポンサー LT と言いまして、えー、4社の、えー、方々で、えー、LT がございます。And then during the lunch、uh, today on the second floor, we will have、um, some lightning talks from, our from, from these four sponsors.、Um, unfortunately, these lightning talks will be primarily or exclusively in Japanese. Yes. Hi. セッションが行われますので、ぜひこちらに、えー、参加いただいて、えー、とランチを食べながら、えー、聞いていただければと思います。はい。で、ランチです。先ほどの、えー、紹介したようにランチスポンサー LT の方に、えー、まあ入りきらないとかいった場合、またえっ、ー、とまあ一、えー、回でも、えー、お弁当を配布します。また四回でもえっ、ー、とお弁当を配布しますので。1回か4回で食事を取っていただければと思いますランチの提供はこちらのスポンサーです Today's lunch will be from noon to 1pm You can get your lunch boxes either on the first floor, second floor or fourth floor and today's lunch is sponsored by these companies それからポスターセッションがおやつの時間帯に開催されます。15時10分からです。場所はこちら1階の真ん中です。はい。And the poster sessions today will be mainly during the coffee break in the afternoon、uh, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. in the on the in the exhibition hall on the first floor. ライトニングトークが17時から17時20分にこちらで開催されます。And then tonight、uh, from 5 p.m. we will have lightning talks、um, here. その後、えー、全写真撮影タイムがございますので、皆様の、えー、と集合写真をこちらで撮りたいと思います。また、こちらでスタッフの、えー、と写真も、えー、撮影したいと思っております。And then after the lightning talks, we'll have a photo session here, so please all gather so we can take a picture of everybody. その後、えー、ライトニングトークの第2弾がございます。その後、えー、クロージングという形になります。And then after the photo session, we will continue with more lightning talks and then the closing. And、uh, the lightning talks after the photo session, you can still sign up for today. The sign up for the lightning talks、uh, is over there. 
And so you, if you want to give a lightning talk, please fill out the form and uh, we will pick uh, some lightning talks. Hi. Hi. Uh, 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 まあ、クロージングを皆さんここで来ていただいて、えっと、商店地に移動してパーティーという形になります。And then from 6 p.m. tonight we will have a party on the second floor in the small conference room.、Um, so after the closing is finished,、um, you can、uh, continue to the party. まあ領収書は、えー、毎年ご用ご連絡していますが、えー、今年は、えー、コンパスさんの方で、えーとこんえー、領収書システムが素晴らしいことに実装されましたのでそちらの方をご利用いただいて、えー、領収書を出力してください。Uh, your, uh, ticket, um, はい、タイムテーブルについてはこちらの QR コードから、えー、参照いただけます。ま,あそえー、また右手をあ、奥右手の方に、えー、掲示がございます。Uh, the timetable you can access through this、uh, QR code, which is also in your、um, booklet on page 7. Also, in the corner over there in, on the first floor, there is a large board with the timetable on it. Twitter の等のハッシュタグはこちらをご使用ください。各部屋に掲示してあります。And if you're using Twitter, please use the following hashtags, which are also posted in all the rooms. こちらの方になっております。はいえー w i f i についてなんですけれども、えー、こちらで、えー、PyConJP アンダー2019という、えー、このアクセスポイントの、えー、名前のものにアクセスして、えー、使ってください、えー、皆さんが、えー、お持ちの、えー、モバイルルーターですとかテザリングは、えー、使用を控えていただくようにお願いします。And、uh, our Wi Fi information is,、uh, as you can see, the SSID is PyConJP underscore 2019 with the, follow with the password that you can see on the screen. Also, the, it, there should be posters、uh, around the venue、uh, informing you of this information. And please、um, do not use、uh, your own mobile router or tethering from your phone、um, so as not to congest、uh, the Wi Fi. Thank you. ネットワークスポンサーの方々はこちらの方々です。And this year's、uh, network sponsors are、uh, these two companies. はい、それでは、えー、とキーノートは、えー、と10時10分からですので、えー、少々お待ちください。はい、And the keynote will begin at 10 10 after a very short break. Thank you.、はい
ソフさんです。コーリン・アルソフさんは大学を卒業した後プログラミングを独学する中で Python を初めて知りました Python を独学した後彼は eBay にソフトウェアエンジニアとして,ソフトウェアエンジニアとして就職しましたまた2017年に The Self Taught Programmer を出版しその本は2018年独学プログラマーという放題で翻訳され今も多くのプログラミング入門者の関心を集めていますコーリン・アランソフ・ランド・パイソン、フォーザ・ファースト・タイム・アフター・グラディング・グラディエイティング・フォーム・カレッジ・アンド・スタディング・プログラミング。アフター・スタディング・パイソン、ヒ・ジョイン・イベイ・アザ・ソフトウェア・エンジニア。アンド・ヒ・パブリッシュ・ザ・セルフ・トット・プログラマー・イン・2017. This book is based on his experience. The Self Taught Programmer is drawing a lot of interest from programming beginners around the world. それでは、しばらくお待ちください。はい、それでは、えー、コーリアルソフさんの、えー、キーノートです。Please start the keynote, コーリアルソフ。Okay, okay. Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to PyCon Japan 2019. I'm very excited to be here with you guys.、Um, so thank you so much for having me. This is actually my second time in Japan. I had the opportunity to come here last year, and so. When I heard that I was going to be able to come back and have another visit to Japan, I was just 
incredibly excited because Japan is honestly my favorite country to visit. Um, I absolutely love it here. So thank you guys so much for having me. Um, and my presentation is called Why Python is Eating the World. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So the purpose of this talk is to share the three reasons why Python is eating the world and to explain why its growth is going to continue at a rapid rate. And then I'm also gonna talk about what you can do to help that continue to happen. Okay, so you may be wondering why this is relevant to you right now. So more people wanna learn how to code than ever before. And as Python advocates, it's really important for you to know why Python is eating the world so that you can evangelize for the Python community and help our community continue to grow. Um, but I wanna ask everyone here today uh, a question. I wanna ask uh, that if, uh, after listening to this presentation, uh, you think that Python is going to continue to eat the world, um, that you will agree to uh, help our community uh, continue to grow. So hands up if you're willing to make that commitment. Awesome, okay, awesome. Thank you guys, okay. Okay, so right now you may be wondering, um, who are you? My name is Corey Altoff, and I'm the author of a book called The Self-Taught Programmer, The Definitive Guide to Programming Professionally. And um, it recently surpassed 100,000 copies sold worldwide, which was just super cool. Um, Tech Digest named it as one of the top five computer and technology books in the world. Uh, Google included it in their list of top programming books. And uh, Book Authority recently rated it as one of the top software design books of all time. Um, so it's been published in eight languages, including uh, Japan. So uh, it's just been really amazing having the opportunity to help people around the world learn how to program and to introduce so many new people to the Python programming language. Um, so, of course, my book teaches Python. It's an introduction to programming. Um, it covers a bunch of different things like uh, that you need to learn to program professionally, everything from um, the fundamentals of programming to object-oriented programming and how to pass a technical interview, what sort of tools you need to become a software developer. Um, but of course, it teaches Python. Um, and so it's been the number one book in the United States in Python um, for a few years now. And I'm also the creator of the Self Taught Programmers Facebook group, uh, which is a really supportive community of 47,000 people that are all uh, very interested in programming and um, passionate about programming and learning how to program outside of school. Um, so there's a lot of uh, Python enthusiasts in there. Um, it's a really great community. Uh, and finally, I'm the founder of GoSelfTaught.com. So that is um, an online platform that teaches people how to program. And uh, over a 1,000 people have gone through my live training program that helps people program uh, professionally. And during uh, the course of all this, from writing my book, uh, to doing these live training programs and doing, doing the group, interacting with so many people. Um, I've learned a lot about the best way to teach people how to program. So I'm gonna be sharing a lot of that with you today, what the best way uh, is to teach um, people how to program and why Python is um, a part of that. So um, I wanna share a couple stories with you guys of um, people from my communities that have made the journey from complete beginners to software engineers using Python and just like the impact that that has had um, on their lives. So um, we have Victor, uh, who's a member of the Self-Taught Programmers Facebook group, and he started with absolutely no knowledge of how to program. He was a complete beginner. He did not study um, computer science in school at all, and he started by programming in HTML and uh, CSS and JavaScript, sort of going that route. But uh, it was very confusing to him and it just didn't, uh, didn't click for him. So we introduced him to Python and now he's working at one of the major tech companies in the Bay Area doing Python development as a data scientist. Um, we also have uh, Dragon, 
who's another member of my group. And same thing, he didn't go to school for computer science. Um, and he was really struggling. Uh, he wasn't sure what to do with his career. Um, but he ended up learning Python. And he is also now a data scientist. Um, and just one more example, we've got Rumiana. Same story, she didn't study computer science. And she was actually working at um, a hotel um, in Las Vegas dealing cards. And uh, she, we taught her Python, and she ended up, um, she was always really interested in tech, uh, but she just didn't know how to get started, like how to become involved in tech. Uh, but it was always her dream to do that. And she ended up learning Python and is now doing freelance programming as a Python developer. So it's really uh, changed her life. And um, I know Python has had a great impact on my career and my life. Um, and these are just a couple of stories. But Python has had such a dramatic impact on a lot of people's lives. Um, and it's been really cool being able to see how big of an impact it has had. Um, so just a quick background on my story and how I discovered Python um, and became a software engineer without studying it in school. In college, I didn't do very well. Um, I definitely partied um, and didn't uh, way too much and didn't focus on my studies, unfortunately. I originally was a political science major. Um, actually, sorry, business. So originally I studied business and I actually failed math in school and had to switch to political science to avoid the math requirements. So um, I definitely like, had a hard time in school. And I did try to learn how to program while I was in school. Uh, but unfortunately, my professor started us off with uh, Java. And I just was very, very lost. Like, I, I couldn't understand it. And I found it like, very, very difficult. Um, so I ended up withdrawing from that class. And then after, um, after I graduated, I was struggling to get a job. I just um, didn't have the skills that employers were looking for. And so it was, it was really tough for me. Um, and I ended up reading an article that uh, sort of changed my life. And it was an article about a guy who had taught himself how to program outside of the university school system. So he didn't get a computer science degree. He taught himself completely on his own. And in that, in that article, he mentioned uh, Python. And so I decided to give learning to program another chance, um, but this time using Python instead of Java. And I bought my first Python book, which was Think Python, uh, which is a great book. And I wrote my first program. I still you know, remember how amazing that felt. And um, I very quickly just fell in love with programming fell in love with Python, and um, I really enjoyed it. So a few months later, I ended up getting my first uh, freelance programming job. Um, and so I got paid for the first time, of course, uh, as a Python programmer. And so I saw, like, OK, wow, I, maybe I really can do this as a profession. Um, so I ended up working remotely for a while as a freelance programmer. Um, I left Silicon Valley, which is where I was born and where I was from, and I ended up um, taking off and traveling around the world, uh, working remotely as a freelance uh, Python developer. So I ended up coding in 26 different countries, and I've had the opportunity to, to code from Thailand and Japan, Australia, um, Africa, and just around the world. So learning Python has just had a huge impact on my life. And it's definitely been um, made my life a lot more exciting and led to a lot of adventures. Um, after that, I ended up working as a software engineer at eBay. So um, I might not have been qualified yet. But fortunately, uh, I got really lucky. And the person hiring me was a huge Python enthusiast. And he like, went to all the PyCons and um, was just super into Python. And literally the whole interview, uh, there was a lot of questions he could have asked me that I would not have known the answer to. But we spent the entire interview talking about Python, which was super cool. And we ended up bonding over that. And, and that is how I got the job. Um, it's from someone who mutually really uh, loved Python. So I worked on eBay now, which 
was eBay's delivery service. Um, using Python, uh, working on the data pipeline, building web scrapers, um, all of that stuff. Um, and then I got a job um, at a startup in uh, the Bay Area called Thuz. And sort of the same thing happened. Um, the, the hiring manager that was uh, doing all the hiring, once again, was super into Python. And that's like all we talked about during the interview. Um, and that helped me to, to get that job. Um, so that was super cool. And the crazy thing was that we were working out of a mansion uh, in Palo Alto. So there was, um, we were working in Silicon Valley uh, out, of a, out of a mansion with like a pool and a basketball court. And it was just, it was insane because a few months earlier, I was unemployable. Uh, you know, employers wouldn't call me back. I couldn't get interviews. Um, and then, you know, just a short time later, after learning such a valuable skill, Python, I found myself literally living out the plot of Silicon Valley. I don't know if you've seen that show on HBO, but working out of a mansion in uh, Silicon Valley. So it was really crazy. Uh, it was uh, just mind blowing. So uh, learning the Python uh, really helped my career. And uh, it, it just, uh, that's why I'm so passionate about uh, sharing Python with other people and about programming and um, helping other people learn how to program because uh, Python has had just such a tremendous impact on my life. And uh, so that's why I like to help other people learn how to program and to introduce them to Python. So in this presentation, I'm going to be sharing with you guys three reasons why Python is eating the world. The first reason is beginner adoption. And I'm going to talk about why Python is the best programming language for education. Reason number two is company demand. So I'm going to talk about why demand for uh, Python programmers by employers is going to continue to rise. And reason number three is uh, community. So I'm going to be talking about why Python has a unique community uh, that keeps developers around. OK. so. Reason number one is beginner adoption. Um, so Python is the best first programming language for beginners. As I said earlier, when I tried to learn Java in school, I just didn't understand anything that was happening. It, it was, I found it very difficult to learn. And now I understand why, now that I teach programming. Um, so the reason why Python is the best first programming language for beginners is because it's simple to understand. There's many different paths that you can take as a Python developer. Um, Python developers get paid very well. And Python is great for freelancing. Most new programmers really struggle with what programming language to start with. And I completely understand why. It's really intimidating. You know, you've got Python, JavaScript, Ruby, C, C++, Swift, PHP. I mean, it's a nightmare for beginners to even try to sort through all of that information and determine where the best place to start is. And one problem is that the conventional wisdom and what's often taught in schools uh, is to start with a low-level programming language like C. Um, or Java. And starting with Python over C or Java can actually make the difference between success and failure when you're learning how to program. And this is something I see all the time when I'm teaching people how to program. Um, and so if you ever need to convince someone who is learning how to program or show them why Python is so much better to start with than Java, um, the, what I usually do is just teach them to write their first program, right? I teach them Hello World, which of course is the traditional first program, uh, first program that you teach a new programmer. So I say, okay, let's go ahead and learn Hello World. And as many of you guys may know, this is how you write Hello World in Java. So it's class, Hello World, bracket, public, static, void, main, paren, string, args, bracket, 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 uh, system, dot out, dot print line, paren, hello world, paren, bracket, semicolon, right? Like it's really complicated. It, it's pretty hard to explain. In order to explain how hello world works in Java, I have to explain what a class is 
and I don't even introduce that concept till halfway through my book. But hello world, of course, in, in Python is one line of code. It's just print hello world. It's super simple. You can explain it in under 30 seconds. Beginners can intuitively understand it. It just makes sense. And um, you know, those of you that program already may, you know, um, I don't know. But what, what I'm trying to say is um, like put yourself back in the minds of a beginner. Um, and, and for beginners, this is usually just mind blowing because they don't know anything about programming. And when they see that you can uh, print hello world in one statement, versus class, hello world, public static void, main. Like, what is a public static void? What does that mean? Um, why are there so many things happening here? Uh, it's very overwhelming for beginners. Um, so Python is much simpler to understand for a new programmer uh, than Java. And that can make the difference between success and failure when you're learning a program. So of course, Guido Van Rossum agrees. Um, and he says that he thinks that Python is uh, much easier for new programmers to learn than Java or C or C++. And fortunately, this is starting to change. So as I said earlier, many, many uh, universities in the United States um, start with Java. Uh, but it is starting to change. So Stanford recently just um, got rid of Java as their introductory to programming language. Um, but it's important for us to, to help spread the word about this so that Python continues to um, grow as the first language for new programmers. Um, and so many people think that JavaScript is the best first programming language to teach to beginners. Um, and I think JavaScript is a great language, but I don't think it's the best programming language uh, for beginners. And I can explain that in one image, uh, and that's JavaScript the good parts. So um, if you're not familiar, it's a book that highlights the good parts of JavaScript. But of course, if there has to be a book that highlights the good parts, then there's a lot of bad parts too. So um, I don't, when I'm teaching new programmers, I don't want to have to explain to them why uh, foo plus bar is uh, foo nan. So that's why I think that Python is a better first program, programming language uh, than JavaScript. and um, the next thing is that uh, there's many different paths that you can take as a Python developer. So you can go into uh, data science, you can go into web development, you can go into mobile development, um, and you, you can pretty much go into any field. Uh, a lot of beginners worry too much when they're getting started about what programming path they're going to take. Like, um, are they going to go into app development or data science or web development? And it's actually really important to just focus on learning programming fundamentals first and not worry so much about what you're going to specialize in. Um, and that's why Python is really great, is because you can go so many different paths. Um, you can just tell beginners, you know what, just focus on learning the fundamentals and think about that stuff later. Uh, Python is really valuable, and you can go so many different directions with it. Um, the third reason why uh, Python is the best programming language for beginners uh, is because Python developers get paid very well. Um, so the average salary in the US is $47,000, which is approximately 5 million uh, JPY. Python developers in the United States get paid $123,000, which is 13.3 million JPY. So Python developers in the United States um, earn more than twice the average uh, person with a college degree. So Python developers get paid really, really well. And in Japan, Python developers get paid really well too, and it's increasing really fast. So as you can see, this chart shows the salary of Python developers in Japan from 2016 to 2019, and as you can see, um, that is growing really fast. And that's very important when someone's learning a program, just to stay motivated. You know, money's not everything, but it does help to motivate people when they're learning, because uh, it is a long process to know that you are gonna have a lucrative career once you're finished. Okay, so, the final reason that Python is the best programming language for beginners is because it's great for freelancing. And so a freelance programmer is a person who does contract work for different, um, for different companies. And I know there's a lot of people in the audience that are, that are new programmers, and maybe you're thinking about uh, learning to program 
professionally without a computer science degree. So um, I'm going to share with you the hack that I used to get hired at eBay without uh, any prior uh, experience and without a degree in computer science. And it was called climbing the freelance ladder. And so I'm going to explain to you very quickly how to do that and why Python is the best programming language to do that with when you're getting started, okay? So uh, I think personally that freelancing is the future. So um, whether you want to program professionally as a software engineer or freelance, uh, I think freelancing is a great option as well. Um, and actually the majority of workers are going to be freelance by 2027. So there's a huge opportunity right now for freelance Python developers. Uh, and there's a bunch of benefits uh, to being a freelancer. Uh, you can do it on the side or full time, and you get to be your own boss. You can work remotely and travel. Um, you can no longer commute. And if you do want to work at a big tech company, I think that freelancing first is the best way uh, to get there. So the old way to program professionally without a degree um, was to get training and then to start applying for jobs. So maybe going to a boot camp and then applying for jobs after that. Um, but there's two big problems when you take that route. And the first is experience, right? So you're applying for jobs, uh, but you don't have any prior experience. And uh, most tech companies would like you to have experience. There's only so many jobs that they can give out to people that have absolutely no experience. So that's the first problem. You don't have experience. The second problem is uh, passing a technical interview, uh, which is relatively uh, difficult um, and um, a little bit challenging and takes some time. So this allows you uh, to start programming professionally and avoid those two problems. And it's called climbing the freelance ladder. Um, so the first step is uh, to pick a freelance platform. So there's a bunch of different options. Um, you've got Udemy, that's one of the platforms. Uh, you've got Fiverr, Freelancer, and there's a bunch of other platforms. So basically, uh, these are platforms that allow you to go on and apply for small jobs that you then complete. Uh, and they're all review-based. Um, so the first step uh, to becoming a, a freelancer is once you've uh, picked your platform, so say you want to go on Upwork, you then want to go ahead and get your first review. So um, find a friend or a family member that's willing to hire you for a very small project that needs help with something and complete a project for them and then get a review. Uh, I hire up people on Upwork all the time and I'm always really shocked at how many people apply for freelance jobs without a single review. So make sure to get a review, get a five-star review, or get two, okay? And then you can start applying for the jobs. Uh, you also want to take your platform's tests. So most of these platforms have tests that you can take, like Python tests that just show that you have the skills that you say you have. That's going to help you stand out on a freelance platform as well. Okay, and this is how Python fits in with all of this. Um, I recommend for anyone who's a new programmer and you're seeking to make this journey to start uh, with Python and then learn how to build web scrapers. Because the thing is, if you want to become a freelance web developer, that's going to take a good amount of time. Like to get proficient enough with you know, all the front end frameworks and back end frameworks and everything that you need to know to program professionally as a web developer um, takes a long time. And I'm not saying not to do that, but a good uh, step to take before you do that is to start building web scrapers in Python because they're really easy to build. Like you can go from a complete beginner to learning Python to building your first web scraper in a matter of weeks, whereas that wouldn't be possible with web development. You can't do it as fast. Um, and then you can start building experience uh, and getting paid as a freelancer, which is really cool. Um, so I did a search yesterday uh, for freelance jobs on Upwork, and there was a, over a thousand web scraping jobs. Uh, and the really cool thing is that uh, there are jobs that range from very cheap to more expensive. And that's what climbing the freelance ladder is all about, right? So as you can see here, this is a $25 job. And that's what I was talking about when I said you can avoid experience, because no one's going to ask for referrals from you when you're doing a $25 job on Upwork. 
and that's gonna allow you to go from doing a $25 web scraping job to a $50 web scraping job to a $75 web scraping job to a $100 web scraping job, and that's climbing the freelance ladder. You're, you're getting reviews and building credibility on these platforms, and at the same time, getting very, very valuable experience so that when you apply to a tech company, you don't just say like, hey, um, I'm a new programmer, I have absolutely no experience, please hire me. Like that's very less likely to work than if you say, look, this is my freelance portfolio of work that I've been doing uh, and I have a lot of experience actually creating programs and uh, delivering projects uh, on a deadline. Um, so here's another example of a web scraping job just to show um, that this is a $750 project. So uh, you can get freelance projects starting from $25 to $750 to $1,000, and then there are also um, very long contracts, so anything from a month-long contract to a six-month contract. Um, so that's just a very uh, good way to gain experience as a self-taught programmer is by freelancing. Um, so just one more quick tip. Uh, make sure to personalize your message when you're on these platforms. Uh, a lot of people I always um, hire on these platforms and I can tell it's really obvious when you haven't actually read the job description. So that's just one thing to, to keep in mind. Um, and just make sure to give yourself a little bit of extra time if you're doing freelance work. The first project that I ever did, um, I had to pull an all-nighter because I didn't budget enough time uh, to actually get it done. So I had to stay up all night coding, uh, which wasn't too much fun, but I did end up getting it done. So give yourself a little bit of extra time um, you can then earn uh, different badges on the platform. So they have badges like top rated badge, um, and that just shows that you're one of the best uh, freelancers on the platform. And then you can list your experience on LinkedIn and start applying for jobs as a software engineer. So that is the exact path that I took uh, climbing the freelance ladder. I did exactly what I just outlined to you guys today. Um, I freelanced, I climbed my way up the freelance ladder, I then went ahead and put uh, my job title on LinkedIn as a software engineer, a freelance software engineer, and that is how I got hired at eBay. So I actually was, um, a recruiter from eBay actually reached out to me uh, because of that experience that I was able to earn uh, on a freelance platform. Um, and see, so these are just some messages that I've gotten from recruiters uh, thanks to actually using this message. Uh, and as you can see, um, they're most interested in my Python skills. So uh, Shannon from Facebook, uh, this is all well before I wrote my book, um, reached out and said she was looking for Python rock stars. Um, Ron from Pandora reached out to me and said he was uh, looking for software engineers with Python experience. Matt from Tesla, same thing. We're looking for engineers with strong Python skills. Um, and so that just shows you Every single one of these recruiters, the one thing that they're interested in are my skills in Python. Uh, and so that just shows how demand, uh, in demand Python is uh, right now, which is the second reason why Python is eating the world, is because there's an incredible demand for Python programmers right now. So we're gonna take a quick look at why Python is growing so fast, and then we're gonna take a look at whether it's gonna continue to grow or not. So this chart shows the growth of the major programming languages. And Python, as you can see, is in red. So we've got Python, JavaScript, Java, um, all the major programming languages. And as you can see, Python is growing faster than any of them. Python is the fastest growing programming language right now. And according to the 2018 developer survey by Stack Overflow, Python was the most wanted programming language by employers in 2018. So it's an incredibly high demand. Um, and it's becoming very popular in Japan as well. So this is a list of the programming languages with the highest paying jobs uh, created by the job search engine uh, jp.standby.com. Uh, and as you can see, Python is number one, beating out every other programming language in Japan. And the reason why there's so much demand for Python is because all the top companies in the world use Python. So uh, Amazon, Nokia, IBM, Facebook, um, Twitter, Google, Reddit, Disney, Instagram, Mozilla, Yahoo, Quora, NASA, they all use Python. And the other reason is because of data science. 
Data science is on the rise. According to a new report from LinkedIn, uh, data science uh, scientists are the number one most promising job uh, in America for 2019. And of course, data science and Python are really linked. So the skills employers most frequently mention in data science job postings are Python, R, and SQL, according to Glassdoor. And nine out of 10 jobs examined uh, required at least one of those skills. So if you're going to go into data science, you need to know Python. And so I just read a great book by Kai-Fu Lee called AI Superpowers. Uh, I definitely recommend reading it if you haven't yet. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, and he had a quote in there that really blew my mind. He said that, I predict within 15 years, artificial intelligence will technically be able to replace 40 to 50% of the jobs in the United States. And I'm sure it's a very similar situation in Japan. So can you imagine what the world is gonna look like when half of the jobs are gone? Uh, it really is a new era that's being ushered in right now. And it's being ushered in by Python. These are some of the jobs that are not gonna exist in 10 years. Uber drivers, truck drivers, librarians, telemarketers, waiters, data entry, tax collectors, loan officers, I, the list goes on and on. This is just um, one page of the jobs that are not gonna be available. I literally couldn't fit them on my slides. There were so many. So the world is changing really fast right now and jobs are disappearing. And it's because of advanta uh, advances in data science, uh, like deep learning. And Python, of course, is what is driving a lot of this innovation. And so um, when we take a look at whether or not it's going to continue to grow, I think with the future of data science, we can say uh, pretty conclusively that it is. And this is another chart by Stack Overflow that just shows the projected growth of Python. And as you can see, um, it is gonna continue to grow uh, at a very rapid rate. So um, it's definitely gonna continue to grow. And the third reason why Python is eating the world is because it has the best community in the world. So it's because of you guys. Um, so Python definitely has the best community in the world. And it's full of evangelists that they spend their time promoting Python and helping the community thrive and grow and to spread the word about Python, which is what I really admire. So I just wanna highlight a few really awesome members of the Python community. Um, we've got people like Mike Grouchy, who is the host of the PyCoders weekly podcast. It's a really great podcast if you wanna check it out. Um, and it just keeps people up to date on the newest developments in Python. So people like him are what make this community so strong. Um, we've got people like Julia Sequira, who's the founder of PyBytes, and that's another online community of uh, people that are mastering Python through coding challenges. So, you know, he's helping people around the world to learn Python and advocating for it. Uh, people like Marietta, uh, who is a core Python developer. Python, of course, is an open source language, and uh, people like her are what keep Python up to date and and make it what it is today. So she's a huge inspiration. And uh, Takayuki, who is a great Python author. I've, I've heard he's written some really great books. And he's also a Sphinx contributor. So it's people like this that make our community so strong. People that spend their time, their spare time, uh, contributing to open source projects and uh, becoming core developers uh, that make Python so special. And people come for the demand because they come because it's the best first programming language for beginners and um, because of all the stuff that I talked about earlier, but they stay for the community because Python has the best community in the world. And because uh, another reason that uh, the community is so great is because of PyCon, uh, which has really become a global phenomenon. So there's a PyCon conference in 42 different countries, uh, which is just amazing. And, uh, it truly is a global community. So um, this map shows uh, where Python developers are located throughout the world. And as you can see, uh, we've got Python developers uh, located uh, everywhere throughout the world. Um, it's just an awesome, diverse community. And uh, it's also very diverse in terms of experience. 
So 22% of Python programmers have been programming for less than one year, but 22% of programmers have been programming for longer than 11 years. So it's a really diverse community, people with different uh, experience levels, people from different countries. Um, and so here's what you guys can do to uh, e uh, evangelize for the Python community and to get involved and to help uh, the Python community continue to grow. Um, so you can subscribe to Python Weekly. That is a weekly newsletter. It has curated news articles. It just keeps you up to date with everything that is going on in the Python community. So you can subscribe to that at pythonweekly.com. That's one way to get involved. Um, we've got Pi Slackers, which is a community of, of Python enthusiasts um, centered around an open Slack team. So that's really cool too. You might want to check it out. Uh, you can go to pyslackers.com uh, to join that. Another thing that you can do is to advocate. So join online communities uh, on Facebook, Reddit, wherever you want, and just help people know that Python is the best first language to start with. Um, I always see people online, like on Reddit or Facebook, saying, uh, you know, you're not, beginners should start with C, or you're not a real programmer unless you start programming in assembly, uh, I, you know, stuff like that. So I know that I never would have learned how to program if I had tried to start uh, with C. Um, so it's really important for you guys to get out there and just uh, let people know, advocate for Python, and let them know, uh, let beginners know why Python is the best first uh, programming language to start with. Um, and of course, my Facebook group, self-taught programmers can always use uh, new Python advocates. Um, I'd also like to encourage you guys to start something. So start a blog or a podcast or a community or something else more creative that brings the Python community together in Japan um, and throughout the world. So um, you know, if one person today started something to help promote Python uh, from this talk, uh, that would be amazing. So I would love if you guys would consider uh, starting something to advocate for Python. Uh, you can also, of course, become a Python core developer. So, uh, you know, Python core developers are the foundation of Python, so contribute to, to Python's code base as a core developer. And you can find out more about how to do that at devguide.python.org slash core dev. You can also contribute or start a Python open source project. So the more open source projects we have, the more libraries, the more useful Python is to everybody else. So um, consider starting an open source project um, and also, consider helping a beginner. So I would love to encourage you guys, those of you that already know how to program, to help someone else learn how to program in Python. I don't know how it is in Japan, but in the United States, everywhere that I go, people want to learn how to program. Like Everyone from my Uber drivers to anytime I get a haircut, everybody I want to meet wants to learn how to program. So uh, consider helping a new programmer learn how to code and, and teaching them Python, because it can really change their life and have a huge impact on their career. So uh, consider doing that as well. And um, I just want to ask you guys, after hearing my presentation, how many guys of you guys agree that Python is going to continue to eat the world, and how many of you guys are willing to commit to helping uh, the Python community continue to grow? So are you guys awesome? Thank you so much. Um, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, so that is my presentation. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, you can connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I've got a blog, selftaught.blog. Uh, but thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, it was a privilege to be up here today and to have the ch uh, chance to talk with you all. And uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of PyCon and hearing all the speeches. So thank you guys so much. <laughs>